So yeah, it was somewhere into my second year of university and I used to spend a lot of time in this place that we called Z Alley, which was basically just this corridor in our house that had a sofa on one side of the corridor and a TV on the other side. And it was always a mess, but it was the best we could get to a living room. You know, it felt like home to us. One day we got really stoned in the garden and then went to Z Alley to watch a film. And let me explain to you the horror that I felt that day. I had the usual kind of like sweaty palms and then like heart beating out of your chest. But I think the overwhelming feeling of impending doom was probably the star of the show. I sort of said something awkward and then went to excuse myself to go to the bathroom and obviously the walls felt like they were caving in on me. I'd never felt anything like this before in my life but there I was having a panic attack in the bathroom. I couldn't really breathe. My mind kept racing and thinking about all the ways that I was sort of chaotic and disorganized and how we'd been doing this film recently where we were filming animals so it didn't matter that I was chaotic so it was okay but then again the interview was just a complete professional nightmare and no tripod. We were like stacking the boxes and paper and had all these deadlines and the was kind just doing a really good job at ignoring it all and procrastinating. I'd created this really sophisticated, elaborate sort of Jenga tower of lies to myself which was holding up this belief that everything was fine. This Jenga tower relied on me not altering my state of mind in any way. But here I was, baked out of my mind having a panic attack and thinking about all these things that I'd tried to shove under the rug. Obviously, I'd have to confront them at some point and, well, my brain decided that that would be now. So, um, the next day, the morning came, which I was very thankful for. I put up this badly drawn calendar, uh, which was full. Obviously, I had a lot of things to do, which I was trying to ignore. I put one step in the right direction of trying to sort my life out. I also went into Z Alley and tried to clean up a bit in there, but that was just a complete nightmare. And eventually I got to a point where I could tell my friends that I don't want to smoke weed anymore. That I can't. It's not worth the impending doom. Overall, broadly speaking, my life gets a lot better. I start taking on more projects outside of uni. Start producing and doing the cinematography for one of my own films. My friend asks me to film this gig he's doing at Motion and everything is looking really good for me you know i finally figured it out i'm not even using this crappy hand-drawn calendar anymore i'm on google google calendar google docs to-do lists I'm getting it done and then a global pandemic happens black board site it gets to everybody and then you've got your own special one that this is called yui underscore film i have to delete everything on my google calendar all those projects at uni are now just left unfinished and yeah, things kind of suck. I gave up on a lot of the things that I'd learned and a lot of the drive and ambition in my life. It wasn't until doing these YouTube videos that I realized, well, these YouTube videos rely quite heavily on the chaotic, mad side of my life manifesting itself through me filming as much as I can and then writing and trying to make sense of it all. But that only works to a certain extent, it's not something that I can do consistently. I was doing this video on free will, which just ended up being a complete convoluted, contradictory mess. Because I was having this existential crisis pretty much the entire time, my computer couldn't even really hack the multitude of different files I was pulling from different hard drives and like different file formats and layers and layers of music and sound and just all these weird effects I was trying to do just to make it make more sense. I think somewhere in that bloated Adobe Premiere Pro timeline, I realized that I just can't work like this anymore. I had to make a change. And luckily a few things in my life aligned at that point. My brother introduced me to this really good productivity organizational app. I started reading more books on like the topic of storytelling and generally started to take things a bit more seriously. Try and change my process because I realized that things that I do every day, my work, my writing, my hobbies, is all just an extension of me. And if that's chaotic and convoluted and doesn't make any sense, then so am I. I think I could really feel that in my state of mind, you know, I wasn't often at peace. I was confused a lot and I didn't want to feel like that anymore. 
because an artist is supposed to sort of bridge the gap between chaos and order and make things that don't make any sense make sense. And I for one know that I cannot do that when my own mind is a tsunami of thoughts that are impossible to grasp and hold on to. So I made a change, made a big overhaul to the way that I work and the way that I write. I think it's working. Although this video, I've tried to film it multiple times and it hasn't worked. I feel like even with this script, there's a lot to work on. There's a lot that I could change and just make things more concise. I don't know if this is useful to anyone, but um, perhaps it is. Um, all I want to say is um, it's really easy to change your workflow and your process if you figure out that it isn't helping you. You just have to ask yourself one question, and that question is, if I was going to make this better, what would I do?